Beloved brothers and sisters, respected guests, that is, I seek refuge with Allah from Shaitan and curse, with the name of Allah Ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise belongs to Allah Ta'ala, the Lord of all the world. Out of 114 chapters, 6,236 verses, as soon as you open the Quran, the very first idea that the human mind is introduced to is Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah Ta'ala for every single thing that he has created. Praise be to Allah Ta'ala to the extent to which he is content with his own self. Praise be to Allah Ta'ala to the beautification of his throne. Praise be to Allah Ta'ala for every single one of his words and to the furthest reaches to the extent of his knowledge. Praise be to Allah Ta'ala for every single thing that he has collectively willed, created, and originated. Allah is the realizer of the seen and the unseen, the most gracious, the most merciful, the holy, the king, the mighty, the wise. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. He has no partners and he has no associates. So Allah belongs to dominion, to Allah to Allah belongs to praise. Allah is the giver of life and he's the giver of death. Be yadi him khair. In Allah to Allah's hand is all good. Why do I Allah kuli shaykhun khadir? And Allah has power over every single thing. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Allah Ta'ala says in his glorious book, in following up, we bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over 1400 years ago is the messenger of Allah. This is the Muhammad that we talk about in our Kalima Shahada. Allah Ta'ala says that he sent him He said that he sent him with the guidance and the religion of truth. Why did you send the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with that, oh Allah Ta'ala? He says so that it may prevail over every other way of life. Every other ism and schism, every other ology, Allah says, even though those who hate faith detest it, they hate Islam. Allah says in the Quran, they hate you simply because you believe, right? Allah says in his glorious book, O you who believe, that's an address to the whole of the Muslim Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O you who believe, fear Allah. How Allah? He says, Hafatukaltihi, as has been justified, a just fear of Allah and you are commanded not to die except as Muslims. And then Allah addresses the whole of mankind. He says, O oh mankind, worship your guardian Lord who created you from a single person. And from that person, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, he created his mate, our mother Hawa, radiallahu anha. And from the two of them, Allah Ta'ala said he created countless men and women and scattered them far and abroad. And Allah Ta'ala says, fear Allah, fear your Lord. It is he by whom you demand the right to the womb and indeed, Allah Ta'ala is a Rahi. He's a watcher over all of us. Though he watches without eyes and without pupils and without the sense of sight. All of these are created things. Knowledge is a created thing, right? We can't imagine anything that's uncreated. We can't imagine a single thing that's never been created. So it's hard for us to even imagine Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. It's an honor to be here amongst the believers in the house of Allah. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. I appreciate the invitation. May Allah unloosen the knots from my tongue. I seek refuge from 
being misled and misleading. And today's uh, brief reminder is exactly what is to walk a lot? What is reliance of Allah, putting our trust on Allah to Allah. What's the true realization of that? And how does it look? What is the correct methodology of relying upon Allah to Allah? What is the rewards of relying upon Allah to Allah? And what does it mean to accept whatever the outcome is as a result of this reliance, right? If you give me $20 and say go to the store and get us something to eat, you can't be feeling no kind of way if I bring you back something you don't like, right? So when we trust in Allah to Allah, we respect whatever the outcome is. So Allah Ta'ala says in his glorious book, I will be like him and I shake on your regime, this is the your rock man, your rock king. What may not take your leg, yet your Allah who must reject. Allah says, Whoever fears Allah Ta'ala, yet your Allah who he will make for him, not for them, right? He will make for him, meaning he will make this for every single man and woman amongst the Ummah Muhammad, a mafraj. If you fear Allah, he will make for you a mafraj. Now, in the science of we or the proper recitation of the Quran, a makhraj, that's the singular word, mukharij is the plural word, a makhraj is the point of articulation in your mouth or in your nose or in your throat from which sound escapes. So literally what it means in the science of we, like when we recite the Quran, even though we might have not studied the science because we learned al-Fatiha and other source from people who do it correctly, we're reciting with Tajweed and don't even know it. Right? So in this science, you have what's called a makhraj. A makhraj is a very, very itty-bitty, tiny point from which sound escapes. So Allah says, yat, whoever fears Allah, whoever, so this is a conditional sentence. In order to get the makhraj, you have to have taqwa of Allah. He will grant for him, he will grant for them a makhraj. He will grant for you a point of escape from whatever it is that you're relying upon Allah Ta'ala to get you out of or to get you into. And Allah Ta'ala knows best, right? So sometimes we might tell ourselves, Allah said he's going to give me a way out. He said, have taqwa, but I'm not like Imam Marley. I'm not like the sister. I'm not like the sheikh. My taqwa is different. I can only, you know, I'm just, you know, I don't know all of that. Allah Ta'ala says, Allah, you are commanded to fear Allah. How much Allah? In order for me to get the makhraj. He says, Fear Allah as much as you can. And for each individual, that's going to vary. Your taqwa may be deeper than mine, but I can't be preoccupied with your taqwa. I have to fear Allah as much as I can. Right? And this is his command. He says, wa asma u wa atiu. And you are commanded to listen, and you are commanded to obey. Right? And Allah Ta'ala says, wa li anfusikum. And send something good ahead of yourself. Right? So connecting back to this idea of the makhraj, Allah Ta'ala says, if you fear Allah, He will grant you a makhraj. He will grant you a point of escape. He will grant you a way out of your misery, out of your situation. And Allah Ta'ala will provide for you from places that you can't even imagine. This is deep. When we do the right thing, right? We don't be looking for where it's coming from because Allah says it's going to come from a place you don't even know anyway. Right? We receive blessings in our life oftentimes and we're not even trying to connect what, why we got the blessing because we don't know where they come from anyway. Allah Ta'ala further says, And whoever places their trust on Allah, Allah is sufficient for him. Allah is sufficient. What does this mean? This means doing what I'm supposed to do, leaving the matter over to Allah, and not stressing about it. Because everything has already been decreed. The ink is dry and the pen is lifted. Everything that's going to go on tomorrow is going to go on, regardless of how much effort we do or don't put into it. It's already been decreed. So we just called to do our part and have this tawak Allah, this reliance upon Allah. He says, In Allah barigu amri, and indeed Allah Ta'ala will accomplish his affair. Allah said that he's going to accomplish his will. It doesn't require this idea shirk that we have, uh, uh, that he has no partners, he has no associates. We say this oftentimes, right? But oftentimes we associate this with a physical object or somebody worshiping Jesus or worshiping a rock or worshiping a stone, right? But oftentimes the greatest forms of shirk for the believers is the minor shirk that takes place within ourselves because we think we are part in a lot of the faith. We want to trust in Allah, but we want to hustle. We want to continue to add to that. So it's really that fickle kind of trust. It's really not a trust, right? 
we really got a backup plan if a lot of them work out. See, to walk a lot means a lot is the backup plan. <laughs> yeah, that's the only plan we got is the decree of a lot so kind of want to have it. So how does the heart look that's solely relying upon a lot? The messenger of a law is recorded as having said, this is on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, Yadakuru Jannah Akwan. He said that there will be a group of people who will enter the Jannah, who will enter the paradise. Afidatuhum mitlu, afidat tayra. He said and that their hearts, this group of people that's going to enter into the paradise, he said that their hearts will be similar to the hearts of birds. Okay, yeah, Rasulullah, tell us about the hearts of birds. What is the similarity between the heart of the believer and the heart of the bird? On the authority of Ahmed al-Mu'minin, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anh, he said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu said, law enna kum kuntum tawakaluna Allah, and whoever places his trust, whoever has absolute utter reliance upon Allah, how should we do this, Messenger of Allah? He says, haqqa tuwakulihi, trust Allah as he should be trusted. Not with this halfway fickle trust, right? Like when we were young or we had a bigger brother or our mom or our pops told us something, we was in a situation and we was destitute and they said, don't worry about that, I got you, don't even worry, I got it, don't worry about it. We didn't think twice about it. Once they told us that, we kept it moving. We didn't come up with no backup plan because we had this trust. This is haqa to akulihi. This is trusting in something the way it's supposed to be trusted in. Meaning, we don't have no doubt. Why? Because we're going to resign to the outcome that Allah to Allah give us anyway. So what difference do it make? Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he further says, La ruzukatun kemad yur ruzukatun tayra. Right? Indeed, Allah to Allah will provide for you the same exact way that he provides for the bird. If we have this heart like the bird, Allah said that he will provide for you. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said Allah will provide for you. He will provide for me the same exact way that he provides for the bird. And how is that? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he says that the bird leaves early in the morning with an empty stomach and it returns back in the evening to its nest with a full stomach. Right? The bird ain't stressed out when it leaves the nest. The bird don't need to see no psychologist. It don't need to take a whole bunch of pills or none of that. Its heart is relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, do you not look to the bird in the sky? Right? He said, Allah Ta'ala said, it is he that holds the bird up. The bird is completely relying upon Allah, right? So the human being is studying the bird, its wing movement, and trying to make planes and stuff like that similar to the bird. they missing it. It's Allah Ta'ala that's keeping this plane up in the sky and keeping this bird up in the sky. So what is the correct methodology? What is the correct method of having to walk Allah? Having reliance upon Allah? This real, true reliance. I'm talking about this real gritty, grimy reliance to where when you do what you're supposed to do, you leave it in the hands of Allah and you keep it moving. We ain't doubting, we ain't looking over our shoulders. He said, he got us, he got a mock lives for us. We got to believe in that. In a very famous prophetic tradition that the majority of us is very familiar with, there was a man that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he observed this man. This man left his camel and he began to walk away. And the messenger of Allah said, hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. What you doing? Where are you going? Right? Because the messenger of Allah is concerned about this man leaving his camel. So he asked the messenger of Allah a question. And the question itself and the answer that the messenger of Allah gives him gives us the correct methodology of relying upon Allah. He asked the Messenger of Allah, he says, Kilu had what at Tawakul, Ao, Atiliku had what at Tawakul. He asked the Messenger of Allah because he see the Messenger of Allah is concerned about his situation. Apparently, he did something that could have been done better. Because in Islam, as it relates to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, silence is consent. So if the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, seeing one of the Sahabas, Radiallahu Anhu, doing something and he didn't say something, it makes it lawful for us to do. Because his silence in the matter is his consent. Well, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, didn't consent to this, right? So his companion seen that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, didn't consent. So he asked him, he said, should I leave her? Well, at Tawakul and trust in Allah Ta'ala? 
or should I tie her down? Well, at Tawahu, in trust in Allah. The Messenger of Allah, Sal Salam, he tells this beloved friend of his, he tells his beloved companion of his, he says, it kill had. This is the command, this is fitul amr. This is the command. So as it relates to Tawak Allah, Allah's Messenger has given us commands on how to trust in Allah. He said, tie the camel first. Why? At Tawak Then you are commanded to trust in Allah to Allah. So this methodology of relying upon Allah means we have to do everything lawful within our power. I can't drive my car to the grocery store, feel like it's a beautiful day outside, I'm going to leave the windows down, I'm going to leave the engine running, I'm going to leave my groceries in the back, I'm going to go shopping for 45 minutes, I'm going to come back, and Allah's going to watch the car. No, to walk Allah don't work like that. That's why the car came with an alarm. Roll the windows up, take everything, put it in the trunk, put the alarm on, then trust in Allah. If somebody break into your car, then don't be having no bad feelings. This was decreed for you in your car. So to walk along and close in this point has two parts. The first part is reliance, absolute, utter reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like when we was children, right? Some of you all might have played this game. Uh, when we was young, we would turn around and we would tell our friends to catch us. And this is how we would establish trust amongst ourselves. And sometimes the new person that came into the circle, he was the one we did this to, right? And you was going to fall all the way back. Now, as kids, we don't remember this much as adults, but as kids, right, we're very close to that age range where we was falling all the time, falling off our bikes, our skateboards, our skates, running and jumping and hurting ourselves. So it's clear in our mind what it feels like to hit that ground. As adults, we don't hit the ground much. So the child looks at his friend and say, what, you going to catch me? You got me? Well, I got you. It's good. Come on. And then what they do? And they fall all the way back. And some of them go like this here, and then some of them just fall all the way back and let their friend catch him. The one that falls all the way back and don't flinch until the arms of his friend is there, that's true reliance. That's reliance. So to walk a lot has two parts. It has reliance and a part that's most difficult for those of us that have doubt in our heart about a lot. Those of us that have doubt about a lot, this second part is extremely difficult for us. And that is acceptance. That is acceptance. Reliance and acceptance. We have to accept the decree of Allah, right? So whenever we feel frustrated about a matter that is taking place, the frustration ain't with the matter itself. Your frustration is with Allah, right? And see, this is where the Hulash Shalik Allah comes. This is where this shirt come in. When you mad, you disgruntled, you frustrated about that situation, your frustration is with Allah to Allah, right? And see, this was Elis's problem, right? Allah, why are you going to let him do this here? And this is how you created him, right? So because you don't have the right logic, because you don't have the right wisdom, I'm not going to do none of that. And Allah asked him, well, well okay, because he gave him a back door. This is the beauty of Allah. What prevented you from bowing down? You could have said, well, I didn't think he was talking to me. Allah, I was wrong. I repented. I'm ready to bow down. He didn't say that. He said, because you wronged me, right? Because his interpretation of Allah's decree and what he felt was inconsistent. He felt that I know better than Allah. So when we feel like we know better than Allah, that's where the frustration comes from. Because Allah, if you was wise, if you was almighty, if you was smart, you would have did it my way. This is where the shirt comes in. Because the believer is content with the decree of Allah, whatever his decree is. He ain't fussing, he ain't complaining, he knew it was written for him. The same way we're not complaining when we come up. We get some extra money. We get a good car. We get a beautiful husband, a beautiful wife. When we get these things, we don't complain. They come from the same exact source. They give us the short. Allah said he'll test us with higher and shorter. He'll test us with good and evil. So in closing, we're all familiar with the verse where Allah Ta'ala says that Allah and his mess and his angels send the solo act, send the peace and blessings upon the Nabi, Alan Nabi, upon the Prophet. Yeah, Ayuhaladina Aminu, O you who believe, you commanded to send the Salawat upon the Messenger of Allah. Salaam. This is a very, very, very huge theme in Islam. You would be hard pressed to find a Muslim walking around on the face of this earth that's Mukhalif that knows nothing about the Salawat. 
Now, he might not have a third of the Quran memorized. He might not memorize a whole bunch of hadith. But if you tell him about the salawat upon the messenger of Allah and he clueless about what you told me, what you're talking about, then you know you're dealing with somebody who's defective in knowledge. Because he should be doing this in his prayer, every single prayer. Right? So the angels wish this salawat upon the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa But the angels are a created thing. Allah commands the believers to wish the salawat upon the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa but some of the believers, myself included, they saw the is defective. Why? Because I'm watching TV doing vickers. I'm having conversations with you wishing the solo away. So my mind ain't all the way there. You telling me, I am like, well, I my salam, left my But I'm on something else. I'm not giving you the full greetings. But there's a group of people that Allah himself wishes the solo away upon. Allah himself. He doesn't call on his angels. He doesn't call on the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his majesty wishes this salawat upon this group of people. So there's only two. There's the messenger of Allah sallallahu that gets the salawat from Allah ta'ala and there's a particular special group of people. Allah ta'ala says in his glorious book, Allah Ta'ala, he uses the emphatic lamp and the emphatic moon. Linguistically speaking, it's not possible in the Arabic language to put greater emphasis on what's about to be said. Allah said, verily, certainly, indeed, truly, without a doubt, you will be tested with fear. You will be tested with hunger. And you will be tested with death of your loved ones, of yourself. You will be tested with the loss of your property. You will be tested with the loss of the fruits of your labor. And then Allah says, What bashful is saw believe, but you have been commanded to give the most excellent glad tidings to those who are patient. Right? Allah says, In the Allah Ma'a saw believe, indeed Allah to Allah is with those who are patient. Who can possibly love like Allah loves? Allah says, Allahu yuhibbu sabilin. That Allah Ta'ala, He loves those who are patient. Okay, Allah Ta'ala, you tell us that you're going to give this test. You name the things that they're going to be tested with. So how will we recognize these patient people? How will we recognize if we wanted these patient people? With another very famous verse that everybody familiar with. Allah says, Allah dinna asobatum musibatum. They are those when a tragedy or a calamity or some hardship or an adversity or a hurdle touched them. Kolu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. They say from Allah we come to Allah we return. Right? How does shaitan, how does an enemy of a believer deal with somebody who think like that? You can't negotiate with a person that think like that. You can't go to war with a person who think like that. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. What do that mean? Only a believer can understand that. Anything that happened to us from Allah, we came to Allah, we return. How do you deal with a human being that think like that? You can't demolish it. There's nothing you can do with it. Because he sees everything that takes place as part of the decree of Allah. And all of this is on his journey. Allah says, Ula'ika salawat. Ula'ika, they are those alayhim upon salawat. Ula'ika alayhim salawat tum rabbihim rahmah. Allah Ta'ala said that this group of people have my personal salawat. This group of people have my personal mercy. This is deep to be in the same category to get this salawat. Why? Because it is to walk Allah. Because this reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua for yourself. Make dua for your family. Ask Allah to save us from a fire who's through the So I have a couple brief announcements to make, and inshallah to have some points to make along with. So Friday the 14th, which will be next Friday, 
uh, our masjid here is going to have what we call it a halal pop-up and a dawah extravaganza, right? So it's going to be a wonderful food sale. You're going to be able to get meat, side dishes, bean pies. And there'll be dawah, there'll be Qur'ans, there'll be literature. Allah asks a question in the Qur'an, and whenever Allah asks you a question, you should have an answer for him. Yeah, right? If, uh, if a disbeliever asks you a question, you're going to answer him, right? So Allah asks the question in the Qur'an, who is better than those that call people to Allah to Allah? So this is occasion where we break and bread. Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, he wouldn't even eat if he didn't have somebody to share some food with, right? The food ain't in, the blessing ain't in the food. The blessing is in the congregation. They're coming together and eating the food, right? So this extravaganza is going to have some dawah where we can propagate Islam to the people and we're going to have a food sale. Um, the intention, inshallah ta'ala, is to eventually be able to purchase a van where we can bring our nieces and nephews to the class, right? You see all these type of vans devoted to all kinds of different things. We need a divan devoted to coming to pick our children up so they can learn about Allah Ta'ala and his messenger. So we're encouraging everybody to come out if you can't make it. Like myself, I'm not going to be able to make it. Do what you can. Uh, inshallah, next Friday, I'll be at Solano State Prison doing the Jumu'ah. So alhamdulillah, inshallah, with your, uh, 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 with your okay, I'm going to give the believers your salams up there. Alhamdulillah. So yeah, so do what you can. Um, and don't take it from the top, take it from the bottom. Don't take it from the top. Take it from the bottom. So your Starbucks money, your chip money, your extra tennis shoes, take it from the bottom. Take it from that part. Don't take it from the savings. No. Take it where it counts, right? Because a man don't love nothing like he love his last. Huh? What'd he say? That's my last. That's all I got. Huh? But if you trust in Allah Ta'ala, Allah tells us right here, found who hospital. Allah is sufficient, right? So we ask the brothers and sisters to please come out, uh, show your support, get involved. And if you can't, please make some fun, buy somebody a dish, do whatever you can. If you can't, then make do I, right? The shortest distance between the heavens and the earth is the do I of the oppressed. So make do I to Allah Ta'ala that he makes this uh, successful for us. Um, in closing, I just want to encourage myself and encourage you all about a point on brotherhood in unity and the significance of sticking together right there's a verse in the quran where allah ta'ala said if you don't stick together like the disbelievers they will overcome you now i'm sure the companions of the message of allah so salam they probably said to themselves why would allah use these these cappers as an example for the believers right because they see in the love that they have for themselves they see in the love that the muhajirun and the answers got for themselves they see how they getting down so Allah, why would you even reveal a verse like this here saying that we should stick together like the disbelievers? Because Allah in his infinite wisdom knew that there would come a time where Allah would have to use the disbelievers as an example for the Muslims to follow. Yeah. Right? Allah Ta'ala says, Yeah, ayuhaladina amanu, O you who believe, alti Allah, wa alti O Rasul, wa uli amli minkum. O you who believe, you are commanded. This assuming that we believe it. If we're not believers, Allah not talking to you. This don't apply to you. So disregard what I'm saying. If you are a believer in Allah and His Messenger, Allah is saying, I command you to obey Allah. I command you to obey His Messenger. I command you, Uli Amri Minkum, and to obey those charging authority amongst you. Minkum means from amongst yourself. So the obedience ain't the George Bush or whatever, whoever they got running it now. I get mixed up. I can't keep up with it. Because it's all one and the same. It's blurry to me. The allegiance ain't to them. Why? Because Allah uses the language in the Quran, minkum, from amongst yourself. Right? So the first step towards unity is obedience. Right? Okay, copy. Where do you get this idea from? I'm not pulling it out of thin air. This is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, where there's three or more of you, and he out of line and he telling the truth, you can make it up on your own. He said, where there's three or more of you, if you don't select an Amir, if you don't select an Imam, Shaitan is your Amir. He's your Imam. So we got to ask ourselves, who is our Imam? This is a command. The Prophet said, whoever dies without, not, without having an oath of allegiance around their neck, without having a bayat to an Imam around their neck, has died a death of Jahaliyyah, has died a death of ignorance. Right? You see a pack of nasty, raggedy dogs running up and down the street. One of them is a leader. 
How the dog got enough sense to do this? You see the white supremacist, how, about you, how he got enough sense to do this? You see homosexuals and lesbians and transsexuals, how they got enough sense to do it, but me and you ain't got enough sense to do it. How we explain our way of that? Right? It's the crisis of similarity. You see, I can't obey somebody that look like me. Now, you bring somebody from the Middle East in, yes, sir. But see, I can't obey somebody that look like me. Right? Because I'm so used to my slave master looking at his face, receiving his commands, that I, I can't get it from you. Right? You less than me. Which is why Bilal, right? Allah, her island was put on the top to call the event. You call the event. And when the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, he refused to call the event. He couldn't do it. His heart was broken. So, I insist upon you, I insist upon me, stay connected to your Iman. Establish that oath of allegiance. This is a command. This ain't something we making up in a religion. Right? I know some of you scared. Some of us are scared. Don't be, it's going to be over with anyway. Ain't nobody getting out of this thing alive. We all going to die anyway. I'm going to a Janaza tomorrow to bury one of our sisters in the Bay Area. Right? Obey Allah. Obey his messenger. Obey those charging authority over you. And wherever you differ, Allah says, refer it back to Allah and his messenger. So the obedience to those in authority over us is an absolute. This is a dependent clause in Arabic. Obedience to Allah and his messenger, we ain't got no say so in that. Allah said, when a matter been decided by Allah and his messenger, you can have no other opinion, but must accept it with the fullest conviction and have no resistance to your soul. So we ain't got no say in that. But if the Imam is saying something, wait a minute, Imam. Wait a minute now. I know we're feeling good on the spiritual tip, but it's only, it's only two rock eyes in the fire. We, we can't do that. Okay, so let's refer back to Allah and his messenger. But we still commanded to obey him. The message of Allah's house, and understand that when you hear me use these terms, Amir and Imam, they're synonymous with each other. When you say Amir al Mu'minin, referring to Abu Bakr, or you're referring to Umar ibn Abu Fatah, right? They were the Imam also. They were the Khalifa, they were the Imam, they were the Amir. All of these is embodied. There's no separation of church and state like we have here, right? This is not an Islamic concept, right? This obedience is not absolute, but it's obligatory. The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever obeys me, obeys Allah. Whoever disobeys me, disobeys Allah. He said, whoever obeys my Amir, my Imam, obeys me. And whoever disobeys my Amir, whoever disobeys my Imam, disobeys me. Ain't no way getting around it. I know we scared to death the police car, I got that. But ain't no way of getting around it. We have to centralize ourselves with this concept of unity. Now, I'm not saying you got to join Imam Wali in his community. I'm not saying you got to join Masjid al aqaba I'm not saying you got to join my community. But if it's three or more of you, you got to select an Amir. This is a command. Or you don't have to. Let me retract that. Shaitan becomes your Amir. You can have him as your leader. The Kufar already got him as an Imam. He's doing a great job. Right? And when we get behind this leader, the Prophet Sallallahu said, hear and obey in that which you like and what you dislike. Right? We ain't going to always be content with the, with the leader decision. Right? But what we do is we stick to this command. No matter how great we become. No matter how small we might think we is in our eyes. See? It's, it's only in our eyes. It's not in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah looks at quality. Allah looks at the heart. He don't look at the appearance of things. Right? Allah understands the true reality of things. So having said that, inshallah ta'ala, I said something that was beneficial. If I said something that was inconsistent with our religion, then know that that comes from me. If I said anything that was beneficial, we ain't in the personality worship, all good comes from Allah ta'ala. <laughs> Allah, you didn't create everything in your creation out of futility. Glorified is you. Please give us protection from the torment of the hellfire. Our Lord, any whom you admit to the hellfire, truly you cover with shame, and never will the wrongdoers find any helpers. Our Lord, we have heard the one calling us to faith, believe you in the Lord, and we have believed. 
Our Lord, forgive us of our sins, blot out our iniquities, and take to yourself our souls to be in the company of the righteous. Our Lord, give us what you did promise us through your messenger, and save us from shame on the day of judgment, but never do we break your promise. Wa la bumma sawli ala ashi wa muhammad wa ala ayam ghi wa sahbihi wa sallam.